Hi, my name is Rebecca Klopp, and today I will be discussing the effects of supplementing medium chain fatty acids on the growth performance and immune response in Holstein dairy calves through 60 days of age. So starting with a little bit of background. So what are our main objectives when we think about calf management? So our main goals are to improve calf health and to improve calf growth. However, early in life, calves are susceptible to disease. One reason why this is the case is when calves are born, they're immunonaive, so they require the passive transfer of immunity via colostrum from their dam in order to protect them from pathogens. I included this image here just to show that the innate and the active immune systems are decreased right at birth. This black line then shows as calves consume colostrum, they get this passive transfer of immunity from their mother. However, over time, this, these maternal antibodies will decrease. The calf's own immune system will increase, but we still have this window of susceptibility. Also early in life, calves go through many stressful events, and we do know that stress can also increase the susceptibility of disease. Research shows that if we have happy, healthy calves, um, that extra energy that they're consuming can be used solely for growth and for performance. However, if a calf is getting sick, that extra energy is then going to be used by the immune system. So if we can find ways to improve the health status of calves, we will therefore um, improve growth. So then this brings me to my study um, looking at fatty acid supplementation. So prior research shows that when fatty acids are fed to calves, there's been an increase in nutrient digestion, growth, as well as immune responses. Also a study that fed a blend of different fatty acids saw an improved average daily gain, feed efficiency, reduced days with scours, as well as reduced medical treatments. However, even though fatty acids are widely studied, there's less literature out there looking specifically at C8 and C10, which is caprylic and capric acid. And in vitro studies have shown that both of these have both antimicrobial and microbial and antiviral properties. So if we feed them to calves, is it going to be able to improve health and therefore improve growth? So the idea behind this research project was using medium chain fatty acids, specifically caprylic and capric acid, feeding it as a nutraceutical. So feeding the calves something that we hope has a health benefit and then therefore improve health status, improve growth, growth and see if we can reduce the use of antibiotics. So that brings me to my objective and hypothesis for this study. So the objective was to determine the effects of feeding C8 and C10 to dairy calves on growth performance and immune responses. And we hypothesized that calves that were fed cap caprylic and capric acid would have improved growth performance as well as adaptive immune responses after a vaccine challenge. The materials and methods for this study um, there were 32 Holstein bull calves that we used. They were approximately two to three days of age and weighed 42.3 kilograms on average at the start of the study. They came from the same commercial farm and were transported to the Provimi Nurture Research Center. We had two dietary treatments, a control treatment where calves were fed a 24-17 milk replacer and an 18% crude protein calf starter. And then for our medium chain fatty acid treatment, um, calves received the same milk replacer and calf starter. The only difference was that the caprylic and capric acid was added in to both the milk replacer and the calf starter. Calves had ad libitum access to the texturized calf starter as well as water. They were all weaned on day 49. And this study throughout, we looked at different growth measurements, health data, as well as energy balance markers around weaning. So now looking a little bit more um, into the, the vaccine challenge, so a little bit more detail about this process. So we looked or we used 11 calves per treatment for the vaccine challenge. Calves were vaccinated at two different time points. So we vaccinated or took blood samples over two days. So we did six calves from one treatment or from each treatment one day and then five cat, the other five calves from each treatment the other day. So calves were first vaccinated on day 16 or 17, just depending. They were um, injected intramuscularly with one mil of oval albumin, and this was combined with um, an aluminum hydroxide adjuvant. And then they were uh, vaccinated again on day 37 or 38. 
we also took blood samples. So down here on this arrow, you can see the first vaccination, as I mentioned, day 16 or 17, then on day 37 and 38 prior. So before we vaccinated again, we took a blood sample. And then this blood sample was used to determine IgG1 and IgG2 antibody production. We vaccinated calves again. And then two weeks after that, we took two more blood samples. One blood sample was again used to determine IgG1 and IgG2 production. And then the other blood sample, we isolated peripheral blood mononuclear cells from that blood sample. And then we stimulated those cells with OVA or the oval albumin that calves were vaccinated with to see how they would respond when reintroduced um, to oval albumin. And then we also stimulated those cells with PHA, which is a known stimulator of the immune system to see how those, um, the cytokine production that would happen when those cells were um, exposed to that treatment. The statistical analysis was we used the mixed procedure of SAS. Our experimental unit was CAF. Our fixed effects were treatment, time point, and the interaction. For the treatment, we did have 15 control calves and then 17 um, medium chain fatty acid calves. Our random effect was CAF nested within treatment. Anything less than or equal to 0 0.05 was considered significant. And then anything greater than 0.5, but less than, less than or equal to 0.1 was considered a trend. So now looking at some of our results. So first starting off with some growth data. So this is body weight as well as average daily gain. Starting here with body weight on the Y axis and day on the X axis, the only significant or not significant um, trend for treatment difference that we saw was at day 57, where our MCFA calves had increased body weight compared to our control calves. And then if we look at average daily gain, again, average daily gain is on the Y axis and week is on the X axis. At week eight, we see that the MCFA calves had significantly increased average daily gain compared to our control calves. So this would suggest that medium chain fatty acids might be reducing the negative effects that we see when calves are weaned because they would have been weaned right here at week seven. Um, so it might be reducing some of those negative effects. Next, looking at energy balance markers. So specifically, we looked at NIFA, BHBA, insulin, and glucose. The only, um, we took blood samples at day 42, 49, and 56, but the only significant treatment difference that we saw was in NIFA at day 42, where our control calves had an increased amount of circulating NIFA compared to our MCFA calves. And then we also looked at the time effect and all four parameters had a significant time effect. NIFA, insulin, and glucose all decreased um, with time, which would suggest that post weaning calves have a reduced energy status. Now looking at specifically the vaccine challenge data. So first we have immunoglobulin one and immunoglobulin two data. So over here, this first image is um, immunoglobulin um, IgG1 production after just the first vaccination. And we took a baseline sample. This was taken on day one of the study just to have, like I said, a, just a baseline to see what um, antibody levels were at that point. Um, there was a significant increase for both our control calves and our MCFA calves um, based from the baseline to after the first vaccination. There was a significant increase, so we saw an increase in that antibody production. And the same trend was seen after the second vac vaccination, that there was a significant increase in the IgG1 um, in both of our treatments compared to our baseline value. Also, we saw a treatment by time effect. So for control calves from after this first vaccination to after the second vaccination, there was a, a further significant increase in IgG1. And the same thing was seen for our MCFA calves, which just shows the importance of boostering that it helps to further increase the immune response. Next, looking at IgG2, a very similar um, response compared to IgG1. The only difference is that after our first vaccination, only our control calves had a significant increase in IgG2 compared to baseline. However, by the second 
vaccination, both treatments had a significant increase in IgG2 production compared to the baseline values, but again, no differences between the two treatments. And then the same treatment by time effect was observed where both further increased after vaccination one to vaccination two. Next, looking at cytokine data. So specifically, we looked at interferon gamma and IL-4. For interferon gamma, this is um, the cells exposed to ova, and then this image is the cells exposed to PHA. We didn't see any significant treatment differences, but I do want to point out that our MCFA CADs had numerical, a numerical increase in interferon gamma when exposed to both uh, ova and PHA. Now looking at inter or interleukin-4, IL-4, um, we didn't see any treatment differences for this um, anti-inflammatory cytokine between our treatments. So in conclusion, feeding caprylic and capric acid to calves can improve growth post weaning. So we saw this both with body weight as well as average daily gain. And this would suggest that um, medium chain fatty acids might be helping to reduce some of the negative effects that we see when we wean calves. Also, by looking at energy balance markers, we saw um, a reduced energy status in our calves post weaning. And even though there weren't treatment differences between um, cytokine and antibody production, the fact that we did see an increase um, in antibody production after we vaccinated once and then again after we vaccinated the second time does show that the vaccine challenge was successful. We just didn't see treatment differences. And the importance of a study like this is just to get a better understanding for a potential mechanism behind nutraceuticals. So research shows that medium chain fatty acids have the ability to improve health and to prove improve growth, but getting a better understanding for what is causing that um, and, and understanding a potential mechanism, that was the goal of this study, to specifically look at the adaptive immune system and its response to maybe shed some light on a potential mechanism and why we are seeing these benefits when we feed medium chain fatty acids. So with that, I thank you very much for your time. My email is below if you want to email me any questions. But again, thank you so much.